Welcome to the Advanced Nuclear Production Logging Fundamentals module. This section provides an introduction to the module and explains the importance of the topic. This module will cover the following learning objectives. How pulse neutron capture, pulse neutron spectroscopy, and oxygen activation instruments work. Know which pulse neutron capture and which pulse neutron spectroscopy measurements are used to identify formation properties and which are used to identify completion effects and fluid types in the completion. How to calculate water holdup and identify leaks from the borehole capture cross-section measurement. How to identify borehole hydrocarbon to water contacts from logging down with the pulse neutron capture tool. How to calculate water flow rates from oxygen activation measurements and gadolinium chemical tracers. How to determine oil and gas holdup in the completion from pulse neutron spectroscopy, carbon oxygen, and inelastic count rate ratio measurements. Most pulse neutron tools have three operating modes pulse neutron capture, oxygen activation, and pulse neutron spectroscopy. These operating modes can be summarized as follows Pulse neutron capture mode uses a short neutron burst and wait times on the order of hundreds of microseconds. Neutron induced gamma ray count rates are recorded as a function of time during the long wait time. The count rate decay is used to derive the formation and borehole capture cross sections. Oxygen activation mode uses a long neutron burst and a long wait time on the order of seconds. The neutron burst activates oxygen in the water and the detector measures the time it takes this activated water to reach the detector. This provides a water velocity from the activated water. Pulse neutron spectroscopy mode uses a very short burst and wait time on the order of tens of microseconds. Neutron induced gamma ray count rates are recorded during the burst and after the burst as a function of depth. These are called spectra. The count rate spectra are analyzed for elemental concentrations from which various ratios are derived. The figure on the right shows a schematic of a generic pulse neutron tool. The actual number of detectors and their spacings and specific characteristics depend upon the service company making the tool. The primary pulse neutron measurements by operating mode are listed as follows. Pulse neutron capture tools measure capture cross sections and various count rate ratios. The borehole capture cross section can be used to calculate water holdup. The formation capture cross section is used to calculate formation water saturation and determine formation oil water contacts. The capture near to far count rate ratio is used primarily for formation gas identification, but it is also sensitive to gas in the borehole. The inelastic near to far count rate ratio can be used to calculate borehole gas cold up, but it is also slightly sensitive to gas in the formation. Oxygen activation tools only measure water velocity. Water velocity is then used to calculate flow rate provided one has a good measurement of water holdup. Pulse neutron spectroscopy tools measure relative elemental concentrations for certain elements and various count rate ratios. The inelastic carbon to oxygen ratio is used for borehole oil holdup and formation oil saturation. It is several times more sensitive to oil in the completion than to oil in the formation. The inelastic near to far count rate ratio is used to calculate borehole gas holdup. The capture and inelastic elemental yields can be used to determine formation lithology. In principle, pulse neutron tools could be used alone for production logging. In practice, they are normally combined with other production logging tools to give a more complete analysis in complex completions. This slide shows one of the fundamental differences between conventional and array production logging tools compared to pulse neutron logging tools. The upper part of the figure shows a gas holdup array tool and a full bore spinner with resistance water holdup array probes in the liner that is inside a casing string. This production logging string can only measure what is happening to the fluids inside the innermost liner. It cannot measure anything that is happening in the liner casing annulus. The lower part of the slide shows a pulse neutron tool run in combination with a full bore spinner with resistance water holdup array probes in the liner that is inside a casing string. The diffuse shaded part of the figure shows the volumetric measurement sensitivity of various pulse neutron measurements such as the carbon oxygen ratio 
and the inelastic near to far count rate ratio. These types of measurements are not only sensitive to what is inside the liner, they are also sensitive to what is in the annulus and to what is in the formation. Proper use of these measurements can sometimes permit determining what is happening in the annulus. Here are the key points about pulse neutron measurements. They bring the following additional capabilities that conventional and array production logging tools do not have. Ability to detect small amounts of gas and oil in high angle completions that may not be detected by array or conventional sensors. Ability to identify gas, oil, and water behind the first casing string. Conventional tools cannot see beyond the first casing string. One can sometimes quantify the annular fluid holdups when the conventional and array tools have been used to quantify the holdups in the innermost casing string. Ability to measure water velocity in the annulus as well as in the innermost casing string. Proper use of these measurements requires detailed tool response characterization, which is usually only available from the service company providing the service. Understanding how these measurements are made and how to interpret them can help you decide when you need to use them to run production logging tools in wells with complex completions.